My first dog, my heart dog Preston, is who inspired me to become a professional dog trainer. I just saw the impact that he had on my life, not just because of him being a dog, but because of the level of communication which I was able to have with him thanks to training. And once I realized the impact he had on my life and on other people's lives as a therapy dog, I thought what an incredible gift to give to people to help other people have that same strong relationship with their animals. I'm ecstatic to work with Alex Rossi on this show. Alex and I have been running into each other for the past few years at dog training and behavior conferences, and I love that Alex, just like me, really cares about the science of understanding dog training. He's someone who continues to push himself and educate himself, and I think we're in a really exciting field where scientists are constantly studying the new ways that animals learn. So having somebody who shares that passion for understanding dogs on a deeper level is going to be so incredible to work with. What I'm most looking forward to in Dog Masters is aside from the training and behavior, there's so many things that can help enhance the human-animal bond, and that can be anything from recipes, DIY things that you can prepare at home, projects that can help enhance the lifestyle of your dog, as well as um, health tips. We're going to have veterinarians who are offering some of the latest trends in medicine. I think it's really important where there's people out there in the country who might not know about the latest veterinary advancements like hyperbaric oxygen chamber therapy, cold laser therapy, aquatic therapy. Um, there's all of these cool ways that we can help um, support our dog's well-being that not everybody's aware of. So to have vets coming on I think is very important. Also I think it's really great that we're going to be featuring hero dogs. A lot of times you'll see um, we celebrate hero dogs with award shows, but you don't ever get a very close personal look at the relationship that people have with their dog. And so I think by viewers being allowed to see the bond that people have and the positive ways that dogs are having an impact on whether it's veterans or children with autism, people with diabetes, there's so much that our dogs can give back and I think that's going to inspire people to have a more reciprocal relationship with their dogs. I'm really excited to be talking about traveling with your dog. I have been traveling with my dogs for 15 years. I've bought this giant crazy van to help uh, support my dogs as we travel around the country. And nowadays, everybody's bringing their dogs places. People want to go to hotels, to restaurants, um, take their dogs on adventures. And I think it's really important that our dogs act as ambassadors. If you're going to have a dog that you're taking everywhere with you, that dog should be well trained. And so we talk about canine good citizens, just like you don't want to bring your child in public if they're acting erratically. You also want your dog to be on their best behavior. So I think if we can help give people tips to make it simpler, they'll have a much more fulfilling relationship with their dog. And their dogs will be much happier as well because instead of being at home or going to the daycare facility, they're going to get to enjoy their life with their people. It's really important that you're honest with yourself about what your dog is prepared for. If your dog has never been to a hotel before, you might want to actually do some training in the hotel room versus just getting to the hotel, dropping them off, and leaving for the day. It's really important that you understand where your dog is at and prepare them for traveling in the car. Train them to stay in a hotel room. Train them to go to a restaurant. Dogs aren't born just knowing how to interact in society. So it's only fair that we as humans help give them the tools to cope. Because when they're going and traveling, you might think, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I'm in this new place and there's all of these new people and look how beautiful it is. But to your dog, it's actually overwhelming if they've only lived in your backyard and all of a sudden they're on some adventure. Um, it actually can be quite scary to them, so it's really important to kind of take it back to square one and think about ways to help make your dog feel safe and build their, their confidence in the new environment. If someone is adopting an adult dog, one of my first tips is to really take time the first few weeks to allow that dog to connect with you. Sometimes people will rescue a dog and they're just straight to the dog park or to a hiking trail. And that dog really needs time to decompress and bond with their owner. I always recommend starting just from scratch, teach the dog their name, pair their name with a treat so that their name means eye contact. Um, I give people the advice of just carry treats like in an Altoids tin in your back pocket. Reward any good behavior. Dogs are likely to repeat any behavior that's reinforced. So rather than constantly yelling at your dog for doing the wrong thing, take a moment if your dog is laying down quietly to give them a treat, tell them they're a good dog, reward them for doing positive things, and they're going to be more likely to repeat that good behavior. I think one of the biggest frustrations for dog trainers when we're dealing with rescue dogs is people who have selected the wrong dog for their lifestyle. 
Um, you know, you might have someone who is a recent widower and they were looking to have a dog for the social experience and they end up adopting a dog who's extremely reactive or maybe has a bite history. And it's wonderful because of course we want all dogs to find homes, but at the same time we really want that dog to fit your lifestyle. So if you're someone who is super active and you love to run and hike and explore, it's great to get a highly social dog that is very active. If you're someone who works long hours, maybe it's a really great opportunity to adopt a senior dog because they're not going to need the same uh, types of exercise and enrichment and that dog will be okay sitting at home for 12 hours while you're at the office. So I think it's really important that people take the time to research breeds to understand uh, what each breed is meant for and also consult with a professional dog trainer before going to the shelter so that they're more likely to, to pick a dog that's best suited for them. One of the most important things for people to consider when they're adopting a puppy is to understand how important the first 16 weeks of development are. The first 16 weeks are when your dog is forming all of these associations in their brain, the neurons are forming and they're starting to associate the sight, sound, smells of other people, of sounds of other animals and so it's really important to help your dog feel safe and have positive interactions. So one of my favorite tips is to take your dog, uh, if it's a, a small puppy you can put it in like a little papoose baby carrier. If it's a bigger dog, you can put them in a baby stroller or a dog stroller and start taking them out in public to safe places where you don't think there have been other dogs. Um, I tell people, take hand sanitizer and cookies. And every single person who wants to be like, oh my gosh, your dog is so cute. Ask them if they would be willing to sanitize their hands and offer your dog a treat. Because on the one hand, vets are going to tell you to be very careful because your dog during this stage is very susceptible to parvo and giardia and all of these different airborne diseases. At the same time, any behaviorist or scientist will tell you that that period is so critical for their early socialization and development. So I think there's a way to get your dog out there and socialize them, but keep them safe at the same time. I love using clicker training to train new behaviors and to teach dogs to have a wide vocabulary of cues so that you can help them in any situation. So I think some of the most important things, obviously you have sit, down, stay, but I like teaching touch. Touch is something where you're just using the dog to guide them and position them. So that can be helpful if you're at the vet office and you want to get them to step on the scale. If you're entering an elevator and they've maybe never seen an elevator, it's a good confidence building skill. I like teaching dogs tricks because I think that they really enjoy doing them and it's something that clients tend to be more excited to practice. So I like doing things that are fun. And I really like to look at the dog and think about what is it that they enjoy? Just like you might have a child who's really drawn to art or music or dance or sports, some dogs might really love using their nose. Other dogs might really love jumping and doing physical things. Other dogs might be very vocal and maybe you can teach them silly things like cry and speak and growl. I think it's really important to look at who your dog is, accept them for who they are, and find a way to really play up their strengths and allow them to thrive and reach their fullest potential.